It's also a thought experiment. So you actually, I will help you to make your own ethical theory step by step. So I really want to make sure that you understand all steps and also that you agree with it. And if you don't agree, let me know. So this is, all, this is really a mind gym. You ready for it? Okay. okay. So the theory yeah, goes like this. This is you. You still there? This, this is you. Yeah. Let me know if you don't understand it anymore if you lose me. Do you know a Star Trek with the with Beam Me Up study? Do you know to beam up means that you are you are just pulled out of your actual existence. So you you are now beamed up and you find yourself in front of a control panel that looks like something like this. So you are on your own in a small room like a cockpit or a control panel and you are there. There's no one around and you look at all the controls and you see, you see look, one is the uh, uh, healthcare, uh, education system, defense, infrastructure and they're all switches and knots. And you can just do whatever you want. You look for the manual, but no manual, very intuitive, like Apple. And there's no one you want to ask someone, but there's no one there. <coughs> so you can adjust everything you want, or just leave it. And at some point you get bored and you see at the right, you see a, bo a bottom, bottom is there ready. And when you push ready, you are being back to, to the world. But the thing is, now this time, you come to the world, and I turn my back to you to make a drawing. Can you see what it is? Well, so now you are into this world, in a wheelchair. But you didn't, when you were at this control panel, you didn't look at or you didn't notice the buttons for facilitating people with the handicap. So you come to this world and there are no facilities for people in a wheelchair. So uh, I don't know actually how you enter this room in a wheelchair. But not very, very easy. So imagine that you are in a wheelchair and there are no facilities for wheelchair users and you cannot go to university, you cannot go enter shops, you cannot enter uh, cafes, restaurants, not even houses. And there's one good thing. You have one, a chain, a help chain. You know some elderly people have these chains where they can go for help. If they, they fall in the bathroom and then they can push the button and then help them. But imagine that you have also had this chain. And if you push, push the, the button, then you will be here again. Then you can adjust only for this. And then the second time you do it, you can go, you will come back here. And if I will be in a wheelchair and there would be no facilities, I would push the button, go back up here and see, try to optimize uh, facilities for handicapped people. Is there anyone, I, I mean this is you, and this is, now you, this is you, is there anyone who would not push the button if you were in a society in which there were no facilities for handicapped people in a wheelchair? So we go to the next module. Well, the goal, the aim of this theory is to be on the theory of ethics. So what is good? And we are going to do this by using this procedure. So I don't know what, if, what you think is good or bad. You just do all the, you go through this. And we now found out 
that we have a near consensus that if you have a society which has facilities for handicapped people, people in a wheelchair, is, is better than a society which does not have facilities for people in a handicap. Because if you were in the position, you would want to be in the position where there were these facilities. Yes? That is just the magic trick of this theory. We will continue. So the next problem, so again, we start again, you just, here you are, you. You go up here, you people here, you are here now. And but now you... Look. Now you are a homosexual. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter if you are here, heterosexual, homosexual, or whatever sexual. Uh, but now you, you happen to be a homo or sexual or lesbian. But you, you were not paying attention when you were at this control panel. And you happen to be in a society like Iran. What do they do in Iran with homosexuals? So, so now do you you happen to be in a society like Iran, you are a homosexual. Is there anyone of you who think that if I were a homosexual in Iran, I wouldn't mind to be killed by hanging? Well, I, I'm, I'm leaving this silent because this silence is important. Because this is where the magic happens. Because now we have 100% consensus that the society which does not kill homosexuals is morally superior than the society that does kill homosexuals. That this, this, this ethical theory is called universal universal subjectivism that you start with subjectivism and you end up with universal values. The thing is, and the next one, yeah, I don't know how to draw it. That, that's, that's, I, so maybe I shouldn't draw it. Well, at least that's, that's, that is having a uh, having a button, uh, having a belly when you are a starvation belly. So now you are born in a in a third world country, like in Eritrea or so, and there is no there's not enough food, there's not enough medical help for you and you just have a miserable life and you are dying. Or just having a miserable life, starving, starving. Is there anyone who would say, well, you know, if I was uh, born there, well, just bad luck. I don't care if I die and live this horrible life. Well, but if you, if you would have Consensus on this, do you know what that means? Well, you know what we are giving to development aid. If we would say that it wouldn't, it shouldn't matter if I was born in the Netherlands or if I was, was, was born in Ethiopia, then we could, there are buttons here to do something about it. We, if we do that, we could give more, much more help to healthcare uh, development aid, then the chance would be much better for me there. It is just a matter of luck that we are born here, but it's not, it is philosophically called, it's, it is morally contingent. You cannot have any rights to be born here, it's just good luck. You are, maybe you, you didn't know it, but you are, you are a lottery winner tickets. You have all bought the lottery. You are born in the Netherlands in this time. It has, there's more freedom than ever. There is more 
wealth than ever. There is more facilities than ever. This is the love. This is how it feels to win the lottery of fame. And you all want it. I mean, if you can't be loved, if you can't be happy in the Netherlands, you can, you can never be, and you will never be happy. So this is the development aid. So we are not ready yet. Uh, if we go to the next module. The next module takes a little bit more. This, uh, this is all simple. The next model is this. I tried to draw it. And I don't know if you can see it, but it is a... Can you in the first row perhaps see what it is? Something like... Cage. Cage. Cage, cage animals, yeah. So, imagine that you are just being... You are here now in the Netherlands. And here you again will enter the world in the Netherlands this time. But we in the Netherlands, we are not living in the Netherlands with only 7 million people. There are also hundreds of millions of animals living here. And here in this control panel, there are buttons on how we treat these animals. These animals. And we have made a choice to not treat them very well. So, is, uh, let's look at uh, pig. Imagine that you are a boar, it's a male pig. And if you're a boar now, then, then if you're lucky, you, you get castrated with, with uh, anesthetics, but chances are not very high, so there's a big chance that you are being castrated without any anesthetics. Uh, I can, if you want, I can show you a picture of how that feels for the or a video of how that feels for these uh, pigs, if you can't imagine. Um, also, your tail will be dug, which will be just cut off. Uh, your teeth will be dropped out, and then you will be put into a small cage for the rest of your life. And then, uh, well, if you are fat enough, you will be uh, go on your outing, which is again your last outing. And then you will also be end up in these nice barbecues you have all seen this last weekend. Uh, which are actually the uh, big crematoria for dying animals, actually. Yeah. So, um, is there anyone who wants to be to change positions with uh, these uh, things? Well, if you say no, then you might have to change, really have to change some buttons next week when the weather stays nice. And you are joining a barbecue and you think, ooh, would I want to live to lie on the barbecue? Well, then and you think, well, maybe not. Then you have a problem. Or, well, that's the problem. That is, that, these are the things uh, uh, which lead this very theory that we can also change positions with animals. And only with animals about where you can do something about it. And this is called, if you export, take this module into account, it's called sentientism. Sentientism means, to be sentient means to be able to feel pain. Look at, look, if you, if I imagine to be a, a, a chair, it doesn't make any sense. How can I, what would it mean to be a chair? I don't know, I, there's no way how to, because, why not? Because the chair can't feel pain, it's not, it's not, it's not sentient. But I have a dog and a cat, I can, I can imagine someone what it means to be a cat or a dog. And I know that if I, by accident, I step on the feet of my dog, that it feels pain. And it shows how that it feels pain, and then, and I, then I apologize. <coughs> I, but, you know, I can, I can imagine, I can see that it feels pain, and I can see that these animals are happy when you, when, when you uh, give them, uh, go outside with a dog, give them food, or when you, uh, when you stroke them, they are sentient. So, this theory of universal subjectivism, you can also um, very 
easy application would be to change the idea of can I change positions without anything going wrong morally. Look, you are students, I'm the teacher, we can change positions, can we? Doesn't make any difference. But if, if I was now in the sand by my middle and you would throw stones at me, huh? then perhaps you wouldn't want to change position with me. Or would you? Look, that's the, that's the thing about being able to change position. Is there a moral problem with changing position? Of course, maybe you don't want to be a teacher or I don't want to be a student, but it's about, about being, um, what is a victim? victim? Can you change positions without any uh, problem? And these are all last, uh, well, the last module I go through is this module. This is a, a time-lapse module, module. Imagine again that you are you, this is a simple part, and now you are you again. Also simple. You're just you. The only thing is that there's a time-lapse of, of, well, then you can play with what time-lapse, but let's say 50 years. If you want that the world is the same as it is now, in 50 years, that's the paradox, we have to have made radical changes. In 50 years, how many people will there be living on this planet? About 10 billion. About, about 10 billion, yeah. If, not, if the system has collapsed, then about 10 billion. But uh, if we go on fishing like this, in 50 years there won't be any fish in the ocean. In 50 years, the chances are that the sea, real, sea level uh, uh, has risen uh, very high. Then what if we go on with uh, forestry this way, there won't be any primary forest anymore. Orangutans, rhinoceros, elephants, tigers, they're all uh, gone. Deserts will, have be, uh, will, be, will be much bigger than they are now. We will run, have run out of many of our uh, 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 primary resources. Maybe we have run out of oil, maybe we have been drilling for shale gas, which has tremendous effects on, uh, on the environment. The world will be full of plastic, much more than, than there is now. So that, that, the, the world is just a much worse world to live in than it is now. But it is caused by how we are living now. So this is a paradox. If, if I would think, if in 50 years I want to have just a good life as I want to, to live now, or I want the world to be just as good as it is now, and already it is already being deteriorated, then, then we have to make very change. Of course, we, we have to do this full experiment. Of course, if you don't want to do this full experiment, if you, if you keep repeating, but I am not a homosexual, and you cannot do this, then you cannot do this full experiment. This, this, the whole point, does anyone know what the, the main um, faculty is, what you, what you need for, to do to be able to do this? What do you need to be, to be able to do this full experiment? Yeah, okay, but it, it needs empathy. empathy, yeah, critical thinking and empathy. empathy. You need to have empathy. But the good thing is you don't have, you don't have to feel empathy with other humans, you only have to have empathy with yourself. But there has been, there's a lot of work being done now in, in contemporary political and ethical theory in how to maximally expand this theory of our goals. And one way to do it is, is well, what would be the criterion to add a module? And this is the criterion now, this is Peter Singer's idea that we only look at the capacity for being able to solve. And if you add that as a central criteria for what is a module, then this theory becomes very impressive. But the problem is, and this is the last remark I want to make, if we, if we look at the, the society in the Netherlands right now, we have done very good in optimizing worst off position for mentally handicapped people in worst off position in the Netherlands. So we are doing pretty good. We were the first country in the world with, with the gay marriage. We do very good, also about women's rights. But if we broaden 
the perspective and we look at Netherlands, what do we do for, for development aid? Well, almost nothing. The Netherlands has one of the uh, densest uh, factory farms in the world. So actually we're not doing good at all. And if you look at how much we are using of, the, of how our, our average ecological footprint, we're not doing good at all. So the problem is that actually if we morally evaluate our own society, we're not doing very good. Thank you very much.